Welcome to the Indigenous Language Institute's first virtual presentation of 2021. I'm Mara Du Studi, an ILI board member, and I'm thrilled to report that we have over 400 participants registered to view this event. After the presentations, I will moderate a brief question and answer session with our presenters. During the presentation, you will be muted. If you have comments or questions, click on the chat at the bottom of your screen and type them in. ILI staff will be watching the chat room to select questions for our Q&A. If you'd like to express a feeling, you can select from the icons from the reaction tab at the bottom of your screen. This entire presentation will be recorded. We will open with remarks from ILI's board president, Jerry Hill. Following Jerry, the president presentation will begin with Patricia Naguan, an Ojibwe language instructor, author, and publisher of numerous language books, followed by Chris Harvey, who teaches Mohican language classes online for the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohican Indians in Wisconsin, and is the founder of the Language Geek Keyboard Enablement application. And then we'll have Damian Webster, who is Tonawanda Seneca from New York, and a community language instructor for the school and adult classes there. After the presentation, we will address your questions to the panel. We'll try to pose as many questions as possible and apologize in advance if we don't get to yours. I now present Jerry Hill. Good morning. Over the past 25 years, ILI has served indigenous communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected the world, including ILI and the communities we serve. It's happened before. 9-11 was another cataclysmic event we survived without changing our focus. Revitalization of indigenous languages. For the past 10 years before 2020, ILI has convened an annual immersion symposium. The COVID-19 pandemic stopped that, yet we intend and determine to continue the intent of our symposia, adapting and continuing it. We haven't abandoned the idea of in-person events. However, those will have to wait for when it is safe to do so again. For now, we are networking our successes and encouraging language workers by sharing in other ways. What you will see today is our first response. We've entitled this event, How to Do Effective Indigenous Language Work Online. The initial offering continues to address what we consider fundamental approaches to effective language work. The challenges of isolation by social distancing, prohibitions of travel, as well as diminishing community resources are the added new challenges we're all facing. Online work has become a necessity and it's happening. Homeschooling, business and training conferencing. The challenge is how do we do it effectively? Our answer is by using the tools at our disposal. The distractions of social distancing are amplified by our own need of learning new ways to work with communities and native communities addressing language activities remotely. Our goal remains to help our ancestral languages to become healthy again. We believe that our languages should be used daily and that such conversation is the key to strengthening our sovereignty. Producing more first and second language speakers will enhance our connection to our ancestors. COVID-19 epidemic is our challenge to intensify our efforts and to create a new and effective normal for indigenous language communities and to double down on everything we're doing to make our languages healthy again. We are committed to maintaining a disciplined approach that will lead to healthy revitalization of our languages. What follows are the first steps toward that goal. Sure. Wabi Bishiki Quem de Snickers, Makwan Dotem, Bishokan, Jenica de Gontian. 
My name is Pat Ningwons and I'm a language teacher. I'm from Laxall, Ontario and um, teaching at University of Manitoba and I've done taught at uh, immersion programs. I'm going to be talking about three issues that uh, three challenges that I have in language teaching. One of them is having many students uh, in, in class online when you're used to a smaller number. I have, because there are so many students, there's a lot of downtime for those who are just sitting there. And um, I um, am concerned that they get onto their phones while they're waiting to be asked. Another one is testing. I test them, um, give them limited time testing and um, the oral testing will be um, easy to handle, I think, but it's still an issue. The third one is the most important one, and that's activities. Because we're online, I'm not able to do the, the um, in-person activities. I used to use drills, games, role-playing, any activities that will help them um, practice their comprehension and speaking skills. So those are the solutions that I'm looking for in this session. Miigwech. Shamai Paul, go on a month at more. Chris and Te. And I'm here to talk to you about our online teaching course and the techniques that we've learned to make the transition from a face-to-face -face language teaching to online language teaching. So before any course begins, uh, it's important to have a social contract with the students and the teacher, just so that we all know what we're in for. And we've got two courses, one of which repeats every 10 weeks or so. That's the intro class. Uh, it's like a taster. It gets people involved with the language. It gives people a starting point. And once they've completed that, then they move on to the intermediate course. And our social contract is fairly simple. It involves things like showing up, doing the pre and post class learning and showing respect and forgiveness for each other in the class. We also have uh, what we're calling referees and in person teaching is very centralized. We all gather together in the same spot at the same time. The internet is much more spread out. Not all of the course will happen at the same time. We won't be using the same app every time we meet and we might not be meeting for the same reason. So we have a referee to maintain the flow of a certain part of the course. And that referee reminds everybody when to use that app or when to show up uh, for whatever they're responsible for. So for example, in our course, we have the teacher who's responsible for uh, bringing the language to the class. We have another referee who makes video content and we have another referee who runs the social media sites. So online teaching is different and the sort of turn taking and social cues that we use in face to face conversation don't work the same way online. And so we need to learn how to navigate our online classes and to do so not in English, you know, communicate with each other how well we understood something, whose turn it is, not interrupting anybody else and making sure that everybody gets to participate. So we have a set of vocab items that we use to navigate the class. Here's a selection of a few of them. Nope. Can you say it again? Not them away. Help me out. Not them away. Help him or her out. Quiche mona. You ask that person. En stau. Who's next? And we learn question words like ka, guai, awan, ton, what, who, and how. And we use these words constantly when we're interacting with each other to make the classroom itself, the online classroom, a, a place where the language is used and not English. So online class 
time is extremely valuable and limited. Not everybody can stay online for three or four hours at a time, multiple times a week. So we have a series of things that learners can do before the class begins. And this will help them with the conversation and with the vocab that we're gonna use in the upcoming class. And lots of learning can be done ahead of time, but it takes more preparation on the teacher's part. Uh, I wouldn't suggest winging it as a good strategy to use for online teaching. It's great to have everything pre-prepared. So for example, um, we have a dialogue in each unit. And the first thing that people can do is go watch a video of the dialogue taking place. And they can listen to how the language flows and pick out anything that they already know. Awankia. Krishnia. Demeka. Onomaniso cook. Qua Onomaniso. Gia wonk. Go on a monte. Qua no on a monte. Mat pet in the jaws. One away. Catoth me. Quank toth me. Cagwai cachane. Be won't go pets and gachane. Oh, being gatomina. So in that video, we didn't have any subtitles or any translation into English. The point is just to listen and watch and get familiar with uh, what those specific phrases sound like. And then we can work on them later in class. Brock is our video referee and he uses Wii Video to make these shorts. And then we can dig down into the exact vocabulary that's being used in these, in these videos and in these dialogues. And to do that, uh, we found that a online flashcard app called Quizlet works really well. It's great for listening and repeating and testing yourself. Katao mawe na maatha. Katao na maatha. Katao na maatha. Antuk. Antuk. Ne pe on. Na on pekan. So Quizlet has about six different ways to interact with the flashcards. Straight learning, reading, writing, spelling, testing yourself, uh, playing simple matching games, and live interaction. It's really great to use this before the class so that class time doesn't have to be spent introducing new vocabulary and it's really great to do after the class to reinforce what people have already learned. Uh, another cool thing is the teacher can see what each student has completed, how well they've done it, and what parts of the lesson were easier and which were more difficult. So what can be learned ahead of time is we've got pictures and those pictures can be used within the Quizlet, they can put in videos and we're associating pictures with the vocabulary items instead of translations. Um, the great thing about watching a video or practicing on, on the Quizlet ahead of time is that when we get to class and start working through conversations, everybody already knows the path, we know where it's going. Um, depending on people's internet connections, it might be hard to hear pronunciation uh, clearly, but on the videos and in the Quizlet, people can kind of download it ahead of time on their phone or on their laptop and hear everything extremely clearly.
And that's how they can link the sounds with the meanings. So during class is when we bring all of this together and have conversations with each other. Language learning, in language learning, we want everyone to succeed. It's not a competition. We're not setting up tests. Um, I'm not creating tricky situations to trip up the students and set them up for failure. So the more they know ahead of time, the more they know coming into the class, the greater confidence they'll have in participating in the conversations. And then the teacher can help them with whatever things uh, they found were stumbling blocks. Now, we've gone away from the pre-class and we're going into the time spent live with each other. And during class, everything should be as engaging as possible and as simple as possible. Because the more complex the live session is, the more it's going to go wrong. We use class time for face-to-face -face interaction and conversations. Um, so as few computer extras as possible. Here's an example of, uh, from our class where I'm asking what they, or where they did their work today. Now at the very beginning, I have text above my head for the visual people to use as a cue to um, understand where we want to go with this conversation, what sort of answers they can give. And for the audio people, we repeat the same phrases multiple times. Now I turn off the text before the conversation begins so people aren't reading off the screen. I would rather people make mistakes, forget what to say, ask for help, than read off a screen. In real life, we don't have words above our heads to help us remember uh, the right phrases to use. So this time I'm asking the students questions and then directly after that I have the students ask each other questions. Uh, Brock, Taka Tanaka. Danaka Wekeon. Danaka Wekeon. Um, Makweno, Taka Tanaka. Danaka Wekeon. Unit, Danaka Wekeon. Maggie, Ka, um, Taka Tanaka. This video clip is uh, from the beginning of a planting unit. It was planting season at the time and people were getting their gardens ready. So we were talking about um, what have you planted? What are you growing this year? Those sorts of things. So to begin with, we um, are, I'm reviewing the vocabulary with the students that they've already listened to on the Quizlet earlier. I'm listening for pronunciation here primarily. The meaning is conveyed through the picture and ho hopefully they've already absorbed that ahead of time. Once this clip is over, the next step I did was have the students ask each other what they planted in their back garden. And at that point, I'm not listening for pronunciation or correcting anything. The idea is to have a fluent conversation take place. Kagwainek. Wayno suck. Wayno suck nake. Wayno suck nake. Okay, uh, Sterling, Kagwainek. Wayno suck nake. Wayno suck nake. And finally, one thing I like to use in class are props. So the thing about props is it's not just something for the teacher to use, but the students are encouraged to bring the same props to class that are necessary for that lesson. So on the video, um, the teacher said, here's your coffee. And now I have the same prop here with me. I can take the coffee, onewe, I can say thank you. So here we're associating actions with items with meaning with words. And it's an attempt at doing some sort of physical response teaching where we're uh, talking to each other on the internet.
So hopefully when they see a mug, they'll think, ah, Kopeth, that was the word associated with it. We also have many, many, many cue cards. And I use these, uh, they're the same images that show up in the Quizlet and they're the same images that we use in class. The great thing about using physical cards is that um, there's no technological glitches that can uh, mess it up and have my files inaccessible or what have you. Pain I Works every time. Or you can get little action figures. Pchanam. Pchanam Nemeao. Johnny Depp. But between classes, we want to keep the students engaged with each other. And to do so, we need to build online places for them to hang out. We need online domains where they can use the language with each other consistently and often. Uh, in a face-to-face -face class, students will become friends and, and hopefully hang out with each other outside of class and use the language with each other. And this is impossible to do online. So we need to build virtual domains online. So one of the things we like to do are have uh, games. Computers do games. Computers are very good at games. I'm not talking about games as a language tool, but instead it's something that people can do together when they're hanging out online. So we like to play cards and, or we play dice games. Um, we look forward to playing some online Settlers of Catan. Uh, here's our poker table. It's an online shared table, so the other two players can um, see the same table that I can, although their cards are hidden from me and my cards are hidden from them. This is uh, The website is playingcards.io, and so we've done a lesson ahead of time uh, with the game board to learn the vocab and phrases. We make a play schedule, and we stick to that schedule. So what kind of vocab do we need? Well... Uh, we need to the vocabulary that goes with the rules, like uh, ochotao, I have a full house. Uh, we need some new navigation vocabulary so that we can talk to each other about uh, what they're doing right or wrong in the game. Kapananaka, you're not doing it right. One of the things that's really fun to do in games is trash talking each other. And we've got kamathketechen, you pooped the bed. Uh, we also have um, social media sites where we've built an online community and it's so important to use it as often as you can daily because once people get into the habit of using social media daily, they'll use it all the time. So in our online social uh, communities, we try and do things that have audio and video capabilities. So I think Facebook Messenger can do that. There's Marco Polo can do that where we can send um, audio and video messages to each other without the use of English. It's also nice to have somewhere for lurkers to show up, people who are interested in the language program but aren't already involved in it. And so we have a Facebook group um, for that purpose. The next bit is equipment. Um, it's a different environment online. It's a different environment on your computer and you need to have equipment to make it work. And the following are examples of what I use. So you have to have fast internet. Um, some of the students won't, but you as the teacher, you need to have good internet. It's worth the money if you can get access to it. You need to have a great microphone because the uh, pronunciation has to be picked up exactly right for people to learn it. I use a Yeti Blue. Language is oral. Got to hear it. It's also great to purchase a webcam. Uh, laptop cameras, they end up kind of pointing from below when you're looking up people's noses or down their necks or something like that. A webcam, you can position uh, exactly where you want it. And so it looks like people are talking face to face with you. I use a Logitech. And then you'll need an online meeting space, be that um, Zoom is popular. We use Google Meet because we found it's very easy to log into. Um, the, the concept of keeping the live classes as simple as possible means we don't use any gizmos or gadgets that are found in the more complicated um, online meeting spaces. 
the simpler the better because we don't want to waste time with people uh, not being able to log in. And I have a virtual camera which allows me to add images to what I'm speaking to have those words appear above my head. Uh, I use ManyCam for that. I also have a piece of software called Voice Mod, which lets me change the way my voice sounds. Sometimes it's when you're doing a dialogue, it's fun to use different voices to represent different people. And uh, I've got a, a video recorder or editor to record the sessions, make videos, and make them available to people who couldn't come to that class. I use Snagit to do the recording and Premiere Rush to do the editing. And then you need a nerd. Someone's got to make all this work. So hello, my name is Damien Webster. So Zitzawa is my name from Tanawanda, um, Tanawanda Seneca Nation. And I was saying that I'm Turtle Clan working at the Hanon Town Ni Hanon De Estahqua. That's our language program there that does uh, pre-K through third grade, as well as uh, two adult language programs. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, this distance learning and effective uh, online teaching uh, I'm going to try to give a quick overview just because uh, we don't have a lot of time to do our um, presentation here. So, of course, uh, COVID-19 hit us all in March and put a halt to all of our programming. Um, so that just kind of shut everything down as far as our adult programming, children's programming, and um, uh, it affected everybody, right? So um, we work out of an office building that we use as a school, it's not a dedicated school. So the office spaces we do have are pretty limited. Uh, even if we could like give everybody distance, uh, there's not a lot of room and some of the rooms are converted rooms with not a lot of air circulation. So um, we just had to move out of those rooms. Um, and then as we tried to get going again, uh, we have the COVID spikes popping back up in our community and around the, the surrounding areas to where even when we start to think that it's safe, uh, where we can start moving into those spaces with social distancing, um, the numbers go up and just to be safe, uh, we haven't come back into our rooms yet. So some of our limitations will be the same as some of your limitations in your communities. Uh, there's no cable on our res. So we have power lines, but they never ran cable lines out with the power lines. So we can't get that kind of high speed internet in all the households on the res. Um, we just, we haven't really put a lot of things in just because we don't like to, we like to maintain our own control and not be able to have anybody cut us off. So that means uh, the only thing we have in is power lines. There's no water lines, there's no gas lines, and there's no cable lines. Um, so with that being said, the only thing people can get for TV and internet out there is a uh, satellite or you can use an old school antenna. Um, but with satellite internet, you have a data cap on there, so you can't go unlimited. It's slower than regular cable internet as well. And if you wanna go unlimited, you gotta pay a lot of money to do that. So it's just not a viable option. Uh, we also live in a highly wooded area where the signal strength isn't that good. So that kind of limits us even as far as doing Zoom meetings, uh, any kind of meetings like that, it, it, we're just really limited because of the lack of any reliable Wi-Fi and then Wi-Fi signal via any other methods right now. Uh, we have one building, which is the office I work at, that has really good Wi-Fi. We have a tower out there and uh, that one, we have reliable Wi-Fi in that, but the office spaces are limited. There's only a couple offices upstairs that would be safe for social distancing so that kind of limits us as far as where we can meet and how many people we can put in there um, so you probably have some of those issues as well um, 
we only have the upstairs up part that's really good for Wi-Fi. So we also have employees with a lot of young children. Uh, you guys may have that as well. And then they're going through the social distancing and distance learning just like everybody else. So some of my employees, they can't reliably make it in at times just because they have to be home to take care of the kids and make sure they're doing uh, their work. Uh, they have hotspots from the school that they can use for homework, but those hotspots don't translate well into us uh, networking. So we've tried to do it. We tried to have online meetings, even using those hotspots and all the wind has to blow a certain way and the signal cuts out and we're repeating ourselves a lot. Um, you have a lot of detail that gets lost in the language, like a glottal stop or uh, if it's a aspirated H. Um, those things need to get heard. And if they're not on there, then, you know, like I said, either I'm asking them what they said, they're asking me what I said, or we don't hear each other. Um, and that gets old pretty quick when you're trying to conduct a lesson. So it's just not, it's not good for us to try to do Zoom meetings. Um, even Marco Polo doesn't always work that well. That's an app where you can leave video messages for each other. Uh, so those are some of the problems and the limitations that we're dealing with. Uh, some of the solutions that we were looking at was something I learned from one of the presenters at the Indigenous Language Institute uh, conference a couple years ago, uh, Ron Corn Jr., Menominee out of Wisconsin. They have a website that they use uh, called Menominee U, and they provide uh I guess, well, it's a, it's a group of like five to seven minute lessons. I think some of them are even shorter, like three minutes, but they're just quick lessons. They're really quick lessons. They establish vocab. They use a uh, total physical response or TPR to communicate um, some of the verbs. Uh, and it's just short lessons that you can do in bite-sized chunks. Um, that's just the general attention span of people these days anyways. Uh, so you got to kind of take advantage of that. And the reason why I'm kind of piggybacking off of what they're doing there is because he's really getting results. And I want to say him and his crew. Uh, I don't think he ever takes full credit for that, but he's the one that I think of. So um, they're getting good results, especially from people who live outside of their community, who can just take the time and watch these little videos on their own time, at their own pace. And they can just play them as many times as they want, uh, practice their pronunciation, practice putting things together, uh, practice with other people in their household. And now he's getting messages from them of people practicing and asking him questions about stuff on the video. Uh, also showing that they're just paying attention and retaining what's being taught. So you just gotta be efficient on your planning. You know, you're always planning your next little video uh, even what I'm doing right now. So this is just a screen record on my iPad. You can screen record. Android devices now have a screen record option, or at least uh, my Pixel does. I'm not sure if other ones do. But you can do a screen record real quick, five minutes, write out your little script, figure out what your lessons are going to be, and, you know, maybe practice a quick five-minute run just to see where you're at and go from there. Um but five minutes is nice and quick, uh, especially if somebody kind of has like a spotty internet connection because they do get cell phone signal on the res. They are able to check their snaps. They are able to like watch little videos and they can go live to an ex extent. It's just not a sustained connection that's conductive for online lessons like where you have to stay in constant communication. But for video feeds and even five minute videos, even if it has to load that video, it's a short clip. It's not this giant 45 minute clip or hour long clip, it's five minutes. So they just have a better chance of downloading that clip. So some of the things you can do with that, uh, you can do a lot of vocabulary building, uh, set up your and uh, you can do your nouns, your verbs, sample sentences. Uh, you can include pictures with all of those lessons. And like I said, they're just bite-sized lessons that can be replayed. So if somebody didn't get something, they just replay it again, go right back to it and, and go over it. Um, 
the short lessons allow people to work on it on their schedule, you know. Um, so I'll give you an example, like what we've been working on here. Uh, well, one of the things we did, this is our pronoun chart. So we have names that we came up with. So in our paradigms or our conjugations here, we have 15 versions of them. So this is the uh, me. Uh, this whole column here, this whole column here is all the singles. Okay, so we have me, you, him, her, it. Uh, me and you, so us two. Now we have the dual. Um, you two, um, two males or a male and a female, uh, two females. And then we have me and someone. And then I have like the you is outside. So see, it's color coded, like the you is green. So in this instance, you can see you got excluded, right? So it's me and someone. So when you talk about this, this is like when you talk about me and my dad, me and my brother, me and my mom. Uh, when you go somewhere, uh, I don't want to get too much into it. We have an inclusive and exclusive. So same thing here. Now here, this is the plural. So we have a group, all of us, uh, you all, a uh, group of males or a mixed group. Uh, we have a group of females here. Just this one here, just this one. And then we have all of us, but not you. So same thing. It's a, it's a exclusive like this one, but with a bigger group. So you can teach these symbols uh i know some of the languages they don't have as many conjugations or like paradigms with their but you can you can set these up easily just so people know who they're referring to and the reason why we use these is so that i don't always have to write it uh, and we also do sentences where it's a picture and you have to figure out what the picture is saying or I'll give you a sentence that's written out and you have to draw the picture to communicate it so somebody else can draw it. And I'll kind of get into that a little later. Like uh, we can, you can play like little Pictionary games in the class. So some of the other symbols, like as you teach them these, uh, and it worked better online because they're just, these are ready made so I can copy and paste these wherever I need them. Um, this one here is we were going over our being somewhere, um, being places. So that was our symbol without the eight underneath, right? That's just, I wrote in the verb, but normally that symbol is just to be here. Um, this one here. So we have this note here, this arrow indicates um, past tense. So you were here, all right? And actually this arrow, um, indicates uh, uh, present tense right now. One of the other examples we had was upstairs and downstairs. So we have symbols for that. Those arrows weren't time sensitive, just telling you which direction uh, up, up or down the stairs you are. If we don't know where you are, if it's just somewhere, then we still have the here with a question mark over it. That indicates somewhere. And then this, this symbol over here we used for somewhere else uh, as you go down here like I said uh, so we these are all our morning times right so you can tell the Sun's coming up uh, we just use that same the hill and the Sun so right now would be the morning uh, this is earlier in the morning or when it was in the morning um, this one we used for yesterday so I put two arrows back um, indicating that it's past tense, right? And same. So these are all the right nows again. Today. So the sun is just up. It's the daytime. Today, right now. Uh, yesterday is this one here. Yesterday with the arrow. We have this one here for tomorrow. So I'm writing in the names underneath. So you can do that, right? You can, you can write in the names for people so they kind of know how to spell it. And sometimes the spelling, well, the spelling is... Like we have this here. You have to know that there's a T on there. So some people, when they hear it, they might not hear that T. They might just say, Ayohen. But it, every letter gets pronounced in Seneca. So it's just a little T at the end. Ayohen. That's all it is for tomorrow. And if you see it spelled, that gives you a cue of how to actually pronounce the whole word instead of just part of the word. Again, so here's all our symbols for nighttime with the arrows. I have some for the other day. The other day the other night 
And you can come up with as many symbols as you want. Like, see, these aren't, like, elaborate. I'm not this crazy good artist, but you just make these little symbols and you're good to go. Uh, we have people-to-people -people pronouns, right? So if I love you, I love him, I love her, you know, different things, right? I'm helping my mother tomorrow or, you know, my cousin helped me yesterday. Those are people-to-people -people pronouns. So here we take that chart, right? And there it is. We use the same color scheme again. Uh, me to you. Me to him. Me to her. Uh, you just use those same the same color scheme all over again. Not sure why it's doing. There we go. You take this one. Me to her. You to her. Her to me. Uh, and you there's pronouns that go with that so you can teach it and all you got to do is use these symbols to indicate then it's up to the student to come up with that as they study them right so now we can put it in we have a few we have like an optative tense here or a hypothetical there where you might do it or you could do it this one they're going to indicate so they're going to put the verb in the future tense will do it they can put it here they did do it um, and you can just pick certain verbs that are people to people so in this one we picked to pick someone up and they're just practicing base i can randomly circle one and or they can go through them and just see if they know them um so there's a way of teaching like the people to people and then here's you can even put your words in here for them uh we also do here's some of the other symbols we have uh, when we're doing the place names so we have different places right so we got the coffee shop um sure this is we've got we got a coffee shop right clothing store we've got the pharmacy that's our symbol for the mall and there's a symbol for the church so you can come up with those little things and kind of combine all these little pieces together to have them come up with sentences you can send them pictures and have them send a voice memo to you um, so if I talk a little more about this here uh the signs can di dictate what's going on and you make them comprehensible you can do the pronouns locations timestamps, and it lets you make sentences without writing them all the time because you want them to speak right well it's got to be comprehensible too uh we do want them to read and write eventually but these symbols really help uh with the flow and like i said you can, once they're digital like this you can just copy and paste them wherever you need to uh, to make your documents and um, get them going there. So one of the other ways we kind of work around it, uh, Marco Polo is a good app to use if everybody has a good Wi-Fi connection. But for us, uh, when I try to do that with my students, it always gets log jammed just because of the bad connection. So Facebook Messenger with the voice memo is one of the things we also use. Uh, it can record up to a minute long. So yeah, you got to be efficient. You can send, you know, as many as you want. Um, it's saved on the messenger for people to replay. Uh, they can listen to you. You can listen to them over and over. They can listen to each other. If you make a, like a group chat, you can have it all in a group chat. And then you can also have your individual, um, chat with them with the voice memos attached. Uh, it allows them to hear you and you to hear them. You can check for comprehension. Uh, pronunciation and then we also do in-person one-on-one meetings uh, about an hour to an hour and a half one to three times per week uh, that's where we have enough room to like put the distance between us have it be safe uh, you can hear each other and you get that direct student teacher interaction so uh, that helps a lot and let me see if this one had it here that wasn't it there was one we had. So this was one where we did like uh, like the Pictionary part. So this one was good. Like, uh, you know, we did that in class one day, but you could have somebody do that. The cups are hanging in the cupboard. So we have things for in the cupboard. We knew the cupboard. We know how to cups. So we know the word for hanging. So you draw a picture of cups hanging on the hooks, and it's up to them to come up with, you know, what do they see? What kind of sentence do they come up with based off of the picture they see? Um, this kind of gets them their practice. But again, uh, 
if you go back to some of these basics here, you're going to teach them symbols and relate them to some of the things you're trying to work with. And you can check with them through the voice memos, but it just helps you keep your lessons short um, to the point. And you can just kind of do a part two, part three, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can come up with a theme on like cooking, uh, traveling, uh, breakfast time, um, hygiene. You can do all kinds of things around it and just make little lessons. Uh, and if you have to make a little five minute part two, then make a little five minute part two. Uh, and then that's fine. Uh, you can structure it however you want or based on the curriculum that you have. So um, I hope that helps a little bit on just some of the stuff that we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to work around this right now because we just keep getting jammed up. Uh, we have people who are in our classes who have to quarantine and they don't even get a good signal where they are for anything. Uh, so we just kind of lose touch with them for a little while. The best we can do is text. Um, and that's about it. So that kind of puts it to a halt because you can only work with the ones who can uh, communicate. So I'm going to end it there. Uh, we'll have the Q&A at the live session when it's played for you. So I'll be happy to answer any questions from uh, anybody who's looking for more information. So that's all I'll say about that. Donnie home. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, of course, since this is our first ILI presentation on Zoom, um, <clears throat> we've had a glitch. So uh, we want to apologize. We had organized this presentation to admit up to 500 people, but the room shut the door after 100 people. And uh, we're really sorry about that. But please know we will make the recording of the presentation available to all. And uh, so I th think that we will probably email <laughs> everyone uh, or you'll get a message from ILI of how to access the recording. Um, so we apologize in advance. And now we'd like to go to our Q&A. So I will be asking questions. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So um, I think we had a couple of questions for Damien. Um, let's see. I know that one of the questions was uh, from James McKenzie. Uh, what program are you using uh, for the examples you just gave on screen to illustrate and highlight with dotted lines? What app or program is used to draw these online? He likes the symbols and colors, uh, possession. And I think... Uh, that was the... So I have an iPad and... Um, every iPad and even an iPhone comes with this app called Notes. So I never used that before. It wasn't until one of my friends, um, she also uses an iPad to teach. And uh, she showed me how to do like change the colors and highlight and move things around. Um, I didn't get into all the features, um, but there's a lot of things you can do just with that Notes app. So it's Notes and then you need an Apple Pencil to take full advance, uh, full advantage of that. So it gets a little expensive. You you know the the regular iPads now support Apple Pencil, whereas before it was only the iPad Pros. Uh, so you just need a an iPad Air also does the pencil. So if you have a newer iPad, iPad Air, iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, uh, you can go into Notes, and uh, there's just a lot of stuff you can do with it. You can change the colors. You can, um, you can write a word out and you can highlight a certain part of the word and change the colors so that people see um, the pronoun or the root or the ending. It, it, it's really, there's so many things you can do with it. Thank you. Um, so I have another question for you, Damien. 
from uh, Ronald Oldman, and he wanted to know what ages are targeted with this type of presentation and learning and teaching. That the particular, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the particular example that I was using is for the adult class. Uh, we do have our teachers making content for the kids, and those are more uh, with a lot of props, like Chris was saying. Um, I, my teacher was use like dolls and they'll use uh, iMovie. We bought everybody uh, Luma Fusion, which is a video editing app you can use on Apple. It's on your iPhone or your iPad. It works better on iPad because all the, the editing tools, they're all really compact if it's on a phone. But if you have an iPad, it's a lot easier. And you just want to make sure you have enough uh, hard drive space on that iPad. So it can get a little expensive, but you're investing in your language. So, but this stuff here particularly was um, aimed at adults. And one more question for you, Damien. Can you, uh, this is from Laurie. Lastly, I can't see the end of her name, but at any rate, can you upload images or is it all freehand drawing? You can upload images. I don't think it allows you to draw on them but I can make a screen recording where like, um, I could take the image and put it into an app called PixArt. And if I'm screen recording, like I can, I can circle things on that PixArt uh, to, to use vocab with what I'm talking about. And it has like a back button so I can circle something and then undo it. Um, you just gotta get a little creative with it and figure out which apps work. The screen record is awesome, it's really good. and. Uh, I don't know why the audio on mine changed when it went from the camera showing me talking to the screen recording. I know the audio like dropped a little, um, but yeah, you can you can do a lot of things with the uh, with the iPad and a pencil. Um, uh, Elizabeth Pierrite wants to know: Can those hand drawn images be saved as image files? Mm -hmm. I haven't, I mean, they just save on my note okay. feature. Um, I've got a question for, uh, for Chris. Um, uh, Chris wanted to respond to the uh, question of what ages were these uh, lessons targeted to. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. So um, we found that teaching kids online is, is near impossible for any extended period of time, especially because the kids are in their own home and they've got lots of other things to do and they kind of take off and, and run and grab something and, and all that sort of stuff. So what we've decided to do is only teach adults online. And then as part of their homework, what to do in between class, those adults then have to use what they've learned with their children throughout the week. So, it's actually the, the homework of the adults is to use it with their family. Everything that they've learned that, that session, they can then use throughout the week. And then during our classes, the kids can kind of run in and out or whatever. And the kids are encouraged just to stop by and say hello. And then you can have quick little conversations with them. And then they take off again. Uh, so what we're doing two things, well, we're doing many things with that. But what, one of them is to encourage the learners to use the language in their home with their family. Um, the other thing is that the kids see all these other people on screen and the teacher and all that in a non-link a non-English environment. So now, whenever those whenever those kids are on screen, they immediately switch to the native language uh, whenever they see any other adults that are in the class. So we don't even have to encourage them anymore. They just sort of stumble in, look at the screen, grab their parents' phone, go on a monthly, and then take off again. So um, we're, we're trying, our, our method of teaching the children is to try and change those homes into native language homes as best we can. And the kids are picking it up that way, which is a zillion times more effective in our experience than plopping a kid in front of a camera and say, you know, go through a lesson. That just hasn't worked at all for us. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I have a question for you. Yes, um, what do you consider kids? 
Uh, can you teach uh, high school students online in your opinion? Or? Yep. Yes, so what's yep. the cutoff age when we're talking kids? Um, I would say grade five, grade Grade five isn't is isn't um, hasn't been good for us online. Um, grade six and above has been better. Okay. I don't know. There's there's like that that puberty brain change, where um, you know people, kids that, that are in middle school, high school, tend to do a lot better on the um, on the 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 online courses. But of course, our our secret agenda. Our, our, our sneaky thing that we're trying to do is change the houses from English speaking houses to native language speaking houses. So the kids are expected, the older they get, the more you can kind of explain to them that they have to use a language in the house. Little kids, you can't explain it. You just have to change the, the, the language of conversation in the house. They'll, they'll put up a fight for a day or two and then they'll give up. All right, um, let's see. Uh, are there any more questions? I'd like to make a comment. This is Pat. Okay. I find that um, having classes on Zoom has really um, changed things for my students. Now they are uh, can do their classes from their home. Their parents are there. Their parents who speak the language are there. They can practice their uh, conversations that they're learning in class with their siblings, or sometimes their siblings can sit, in the, sit beside them and uh, learn with them. So that's a plus for Zoom learning. Um, okay, so um, I'm just looking for some more questions which are being forwarded to me by the ILI staff. Um, uh, Damien, what equipment do your learners need to participate actively in your instruction? So just for these, they just need their mobile device, uh, their phone or their tablet. Uh, some have laptops. Uh, like Chris said, keep it simple. So I try to keep that simple. Like I do all that stuff on my end as far as like putting it on the iPad and doing the drawing and posting and having a video account. Um, but for them, I just try to keep it simple where they can watch it. It's short. Uh, they're able to view it on their device and then they'll get their assignment or what, and we can go through the messenger as far as like what I'm, what I need out of them um, as far as uh, showing their comprehension uh, interaction, uh, little things like that. The mobile di device is is pretty much all they need um, as a student. Okay, and this is a question for the whole panel. Um, uh, so, uh, how has your how have your expect expectations change from being in person to, um, <coughs> to mostly online? I can start with that. Um, my expectations have uh, grown. So I'm expecting more from the learners online than I did in person. And the reason being is that in, in the face-to-face -face situation, it was always life happens, we come to the classroom, we do the language thing, and then life goes back happening again. Uh, because we've had to use all of these tools, all of these apps and such, uh, I think we've learned that you can do language learning 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you want. And so I know a number of my, um, the learners that I work with uh, are, you know, they, they, they're young parents or something and they don't have any time except for two in the morning when the kids are asleep and they do the Quizlet or they watch videos whenever they can. So because we're not stuck with a schedule anymore, the, I think people are actually learning faster. It, it's weird and I didn't expect that, but I find that the, the learners are doing better now than they did before. Okay. Um... Do you uh, have any tips 
is this a panel at, at large? Do you have any um, tips for one-on-one -on -one language learning with master apprentice teams online during the pandemic? I, I couldn't speak, I don't have any, I haven't done any master apprentice work, so uh, I couldn't speak to that. I think in that situation, um, like a lot of our lessons are around things that people do uh, in their daily lives. So, you know, we had the fishing lesson during hunting season, we had a hunting lesson and the hunters actually went out and used the language while they were um, hunting deer and such. I think if you wanted to do one-on-one, -on -one, this is just me, me sort of uh, free associating here, but you could have like your, your, your um, speaker with one of those, um, you know, uh, cell phone camera holder things that just follow you around. And then the, the learner can, can watch that and interact and both parties do some activity. So I don't know if you're cleaning fish or something, you can have the speaker sitting there with the camera facing them and they can do the work. And then the learner can have the same situation and um, kind of try your best to be in the same room while you're not in the same room. That's what I would do. That's what I would try to do and see if it worked. Mm -hmm. And you need, you need like, I, I, the last slide on my presentation was a bit tongue in cheek. And I said, you need a nerd. Well, you actually do need a nerd. You know, find somebody around who understands all this, um, you know, computer electronics, whatever, really well. And even if they're not in the language program, maybe they'll never be a, a language speaker until you can convince them otherwise. But you can hook them in to help you with um, the audio video and, and that sort of thing. Because your job as a, as a uh, master or an apprentice in that program isn't to figure out how computers work you need to spend your time on the language. So I would rope in anybody you can um, to help with the tech stuff in the same sense that if you have a classroom, I don't have to build the building. I don't have to feed the electricity and I don't have to sweep the floors. Um, you know, use other people around you to help with these sorts of things. Okay. Um, let's see, All right. I've got another question with you. Um, Renee, do we have any more questions? I don't I see. I could speak to yeah. the, I didn't get the, like the expectations. For us, because of the limited Wi-Fi availability or just the limit, like we don't have a sustained connection on the res, we've, mm -hmm. we've kind of had to temper it a little or change it too, right? So we're going to pre-record it instead of, direct interaction as far as like a zoom meeting you just can't do this we can but it glitches way too much um but the struggle for my employees at home they can't just go into a room and even just watch the videos they've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old on their hip and you know all you moms out there know you can't even go to the bathroom without your kids trying to, you know, wondering where you're at and sticking their hand under the door. And so it's really hard for them to just get a moment of peace just to even do the language learning uh, and then feeding, feeding their family. Uh, so we still have expectations of them, um, but it's a lot easier when they can just come to class and they're away from their family. Um, the support system isn't always as good on the other end at home. Um, like I said, we still have expectations, but we've kind of had to be more realistic about what can get done at home in these uh, big family households. I'm, I'm kind of watching the chat here and I, I see there's a, a discussion about um, Quizlet going on and questions like, do you need Quizlet Plus uh, to be able to use audio? So something I didn't mention in my talk, and I probably should have, is that most of the software that I've um, I demonstrated has a pro version, which you pay for, and either a free or trial version that doesn't do as many good things. And I had to change conceptually the way I thought about the internet 
uh, when I started doing this because um, I didn't like paying for stuff, right? Oh, I'll, I'll get the free version of Quizlet. I got the free version of ManyCam. I got the free version of all these things. And I know how far I can, I can go without having to pay for it. And in all these cases, I reached a point where I wanted these programs to do more than the basic version would allow me. So I bought them as like a one-time fee and I bought them and I thought, well, that costs money. And I don't want to, you know, be selling, selling things to the people who come to these presentations. And then I sat down and did the math of how much gas used to cost me to drive back and forth to where the physical classes were. And I can buy Quizlet Pro for the price of driving there and back in my van. So I'm saving a mint on not having to drive to classes. And instead I can take that money and spend it on the pro version of this software. So that really surprised me about actually how expensive it is driving around, um, you know, a couple of days a week to, to classes and that I could take that money and spend it on software that I can have kind of the rest of my life. So just, uh, just that my thought on why um, you might think about investing in the, the paid versions of these things. Great advice, Chris. Um, we have a question from Sheila Nicholas to the panel at large. Uh, she asked, in starting out, what are the most basic equipment you need to get as an instructor and then for students and learners? Students I like all the stuff these. that, yeah. <laughs> students need one of these and that's it. Um, and the, for what an instructor needs, that's what I had in my presentation. And mm -hmm. if you go in the chat, I gave a list of all the equipment I use. I, I think having as fast as internet as you can get and the best microphone you can get are the two most important things. Because you have to be able to hear, like Damien was saying, every little glottal stop, every little long vowel, um, because it, it's, those are the things that are easy to do in person is work on pronunciation. And so, but I, I would never expect my learners to, to have all this sort of stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, any other questions, Ine? Yeah. There's one more, which I'm sending to you now. Okay. Um, Trish McNeil. Okay. That's and it. Yes. Um, I've got it. Uh, have you provided equipment to the master in a master apprentices online program? And how has that worked out? We're not doing that program, but I would. I would give the equipment away. No, no, no question. Gia Richa Frisch, Kinchi will too. Um and Dave, yeah, I, I, I think that like I'm I think that, that learners should be paid to learn the course. You know what I mean? I think that that um you know for people who don't have internet coming to their house, there should be somewhere where they can go to get the internet. I think that community should bend over backwards to remove as many hurdles from learners as possible so that they can focus on learning to speak, which is the most valuable uh, or one of the most valuable things you can do in your life. So um, I, I would do absolutely everything I can to make the master's life as easy as possible and the learner's life as easy as possible because they're doing the real work. The last thing they need to do is, is, you know, not be able to afford something. I think everyone can kick in a few bucks and make that possible. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's my, my sort of idealized world. <laughs> my grandson uh, speaks the language now. And I started teaching him when he was 12. And he's 22 now. Um, but I used to take him driving. And we would describe whatever we saw around us and uh, just you know did a lot of conversation now he speaks very fluently we text each other 
all the time. Um, he writes perfectly. Uh, he, his spelling is immaculate. So we, it, that's just an, an effort that I that we both made. He 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 um, he went beyond what I was teaching him by going to dictionaries and reading stories. So that's how he um, enhanced his learning. But it takes a lot of work. But he he's a fluent speaker. Okay. Do we have anything else, uh, Ine, question-wise? No, I don't see any more oh. questions. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to hand over the podium, as it were, the virtual podium to Ine Slaughter, our executive director. And uh, she has a few things to tell you before we say goodbye. Ine? Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Uh, if not, I'm in the little thumbnail. So I am so happy to see some of you, uh, or all of you actually, but some of you are brand new names. So I, I was so excited that you could join us today and I apologize for the uh, Zoom glitch. We did pay extra so that we could have uh, 500 people join but the door closed after 100, so we're going to look into it. The good thing is we've recorded this whole session. We have to convert it into a format that we can put on YouTube. So all of you who have registered and your colleagues who couldn't get in, please let them know that we will send you email as to how to access that YouTube video once we learn how to convert this. This has been a learning experience for the staff, uh, for all the presenters, um, majority of whom are our board members who have given their time and energy pro bono. So thank you to the presenters. But uh, we have learned a lot and I think we're a good example of how at the grassroots, we can make these technologies work for us. It was so tempting to find funding to get a company to do this for us, but you know what? We got to own it. So we're happy with the uh, glitches. <laughs> we're happy mm. with the challenges we all faced, but we're so pleased that uh, we could do this on our own. And so I want to share that, that do not be discouraged if, it's, if it seems difficult. You will learn and it'll be yours. And so thank you again for those who could join and be in this room together. And we were a hundred strong and people pounding at the door. So, <laughs> and we will have a series of presentations. Uh, uh, so we will send some information through the email or newsletter uh, as for our upcoming series of presentations. So thank you again for joining. And uh, if we haven't mentioned it yet, uh, I forgot to say happy new year. <laughs> may, may 2021 be safe. Um, and healthy, and good for all of us. And until we meet again, miigwech, kamsamnida, thank you.